Hello everyone, I am Julian Morris with the Channel 5 News. In the headlines, Senior Council Anthony Astavan defends the Prime Minister's public commitment to have over 150 junior clerks appointed. 28 primary school principals with UWI leadership certificates expected to translate into better grades for students. And supermarkets recognized for their role in facilitating Dominica's drive to go green. The details coming up. Some tips to reduce mosquito presence in and around your home. Keep water storage containers properly covered. Remove containers that can collect water from your surroundings. Keep garbage bins tightly covered. Pick up your litter and remove all tires from your yard. Keep gutters free of leaves and twigs to prevent stagnant water. Prevent Zika, Dengue and Chikungunya. Fight the bite! This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. This message is supported by Flo. General Secretary of the Public Service Union Thomas Leiter says contrary to what the Prime Minister says, there are fewer than 152 junior clerks in the public service. Thomas Leiter told Channel 5 News on Thursday the 152 clerks referred to by the Prime Minister at Newtown on the 2nd of June more readily applies to teachers or other union members. Here's what the Prime Minister promised as he addressed the launching of DLP candidate for Rosa South Shakira Lockhart Hippolyte. I met the junior clerks. And their main issue is the non appointment. And I will say to them tonight I have given instructions to the Chief Personal Officer to move with the appointment of 152 junior clerks in Dominica, ladies and gentlemen. and to fill all vacant positions in the public service with immediate effect so every vacant post in the public service shall be filled. And my friends, my friends in the Treasury, very hardworking people in the Treasury, the Accountant General, I have the greatest respect for her, her professionalism and her dedication to hard work. And the number of them were not appointed. On Tuesday coming, the cabinet will take a decision to create a new structure in the treasury and to address some of the structural issues in the, in the treasury to ensure that those of you who are not in positions, there are positions for you in that treasury department, ladies and gentlemen. Thomas Leder says it's not the Prime Minister but the Public Service Commission upon recommendation of the Permanent Secretaries and then the Establishment Department that can appoint junior clerks. Leder says the Public Service Commission is the only entity that appoints, dismisses, transfers and disciplines public officers. But he says the PSC does not appoint unless the recommendations come from the Permanent Secretary. He says the Prime Minister has the privilege in the case of certain senior positions to approve or raise objection to a recommendation recommendation for appointment. Later says recommendations of appointment for Steve Joseph and Don Corriott were both objected to by the Prime Minister. He says in these instances the recommendations did not reach the Public Service Commission. Channel 5 News uh, reached out to the office of the Chief Personnel Officer and also sent an email seeking any updates on the Prime Minister's commitments made on June 2nd. So far, no response from establishment, but Senior Counsel Anthony Astefan, who is also the Prime Minister's attorney, says the DPSU General Secretary has misunderstood the Prime Minister's pronouncements on June 2nd in Newtown. It's fairly obvious to me that, that Mr. Leiter doesn't understand the system that, that he's part of. For example, when the Prime Minister mentioned the 152 junior clerks, do you know where that figure came from? That figure came from the, from the Chief Personnel Officer's database who represented that figure to the Prime Minister based on vacancies of that type in every single department and ministry of, of the government and the public service and public servants, including teachers. 
So obviously Mr. Lita is out of touch. Now, secondly, the first time I responded to this, I said it depends on whether there were established positions that the Prime Minister was being was speaking to. And if in fact that's what he was speaking to, what the Prime Minister was telling the permanent secretaries and the relevant authorities in the public service was to speed up the system, speed up the process, make sure, absolutely make sure that the process is followed to whether it's through assessments or whatever have you to ensure that the necessary documentation can be sent to the public service for approval, public service commission for approval. Now, Mr. Mr. Later knows that, but Mr. Later, as I've indicated on more than once, is on a political mission. Just imagine the General Secretary of the Public Service Union does not know that there are 152 vacant positions in all of the ministries and departments, including the teaching service of the government. Just imagine that. And as I said, that figure came from the Chief Personnel Office Officer to the Prime Minister. So all the Prime Minister said at that speech was, guys, pull up your socks, put the engine in gear, and move it forward to take the necessary applications and, and recommendations to the Commission. The Prime Minister was not indicating that they had or they were supposed to, or that they, meaning the public servants or himself, should, should um, make the appointments themselves. Senior Council also addressed the union leader's concerns over two public servants whose appointments, he says, were objected to by the Prime Minister. Nobody has an automatic right to be recommended for promotions or appointments. There may be legitimate reasons, I do not know why, there may be an objection or otherwise, or, 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 or some other valid reason why somebody may not be recommended to appointment or to a post. But, you know, it is unfortunate that I have to keep coming onto Mappy News and other media, seeking to explain and to clarify the mischief-making of Mr. Thomas Later, who I, I am now convinced is the political leader of the, of the Public Service Union. So, in conclusion, the 152, the number 152 didn't come from the air. It was given to the Prime Minister by senior public servants in the public service. And the Prime Minister was never suggesting bypassing the Public Service Commission. He was saying put the process in the engine in go and get it done and get it done as soon as you can. But of course, Mr. Leta would never have understood it that way. In other news, two facilities used to develop creative art among young people are almost fully renovated. Andrea Louis has a report. Several buildings utilized by the Cultural Division were severely damaged during Hurricane Maria, bringing to a halt teaching of cultural expressions to youth in Dominica. Nearly two years after the passage of the storm, Chief Cultural Officer Raymond Lawrence is reporting that renovation is almost complete on the dance studio and wood carving studio used by the Cultural Division. For the initial, I would say, um, maybe six months, um, we couldn't have any classes at the dance studio. It was, the roof was badly damaged and so, so we had to wait until there was a fair amount of repair. Um, to resume classes there, and thank God we were able to resume classes. Uh, in the meantime, we had to be using the main building for dance classes. So, um, but now the dance is back at the dance studio. And the wood carving uh, reconstruction, thank God, didn't affect the program too much because um, the tutor was able to still conduct classes downstairs of the building while the reconstruction was going on. The contractor told me that he's almost, he's almost completed with the project. Earlier this year, the government announced an injection of $1.4 million into renovating the Arak House of Culture and the Old Mill Cultural Center. $500,000 of that total had been allocated to renovating the stage at the Old Mill Cultural Center, which is phase one of a larger project. We are also constructing a new stage in the yard of the old mill. That too is progressing. Maybe I would have wanted to see it move a little faster, but it's, it is progressing. 
Um, and um, so hopefully soon we would be able to have a, a new stage at the Old Mill and to be able to actually stage performances here at the Old Mill. It is hoped that Phase 1 will be completed before the end of the year, following which works will start on Phase 2. Because there's a second part to the project which will include washrooms and dressing rooms apart from this performance area. Um, so that will probably take a little time as well. But at present there will be a, a small backstage in, in what is being constructed. But in addition to that we still will have another structure that will have more dressing room space and of course washrooms. Another of the structures renovated was the main building at the Old Mill Cultural Center. Staff had spent over a year operating from another location and was able to return to the original workplace late last year. Andrea Louis, Channel 5 News. And supermarkets being commended for their proactive approach in going green. This follows the pronouncement by government to phase out and gradually eliminate the use of single-use plastic shopping bags in 2019. To date, several supermarkets have stopped using plastic bags to package grocery items and offer reusable bags instead. However, there are other supermarkets which offer plastic bags to customers at a cost. General Manager of the Dominica Solid Waste Management Corporation, Florian Mitchell, says steps have been taken to discourage supermarkets from importing plastic bags to keep in line with the country's vision of eradicating single-use plastics and eventually becoming the world's first climate-resilient nation. But since um, the supermarkets understand the um, issue that is a result of that particular material, and then they start to start phasing it out, which we, which we. Um, applauded because um, what we did, or when I say we, the government did, was that through the ban, the, those items, reusable bags, government also zero rated it. So it would mean that you could bring that material down and pay no import duties. So it was basically saying, hey, we have other items that we want to ban. I mean, those other items will come in. So if you bring in a reusable bag, it means that you don't really need to bring a t-shirt bag because you're going to have to pay some taxes on the import duty on the t-shirt bags. Or, but on the reusable bag, you don't have to pay. So bring in that reusable bags. And, and we saw the supermarkets gradually moving towards that. And we really applaud those things. Just last week, the Dominica Solid Waste Management Corporation partnered with the Ministry of Tourism and Culture to distribute over 1,000 reusable shopping bags in the Rosa area with plans of distributing these bags around the rest of the country. You are watching Channel 5 News. We'll have more after this. with TB sneeze or cough, healthy persons nearby breathe in the droplets and the bacteria can lodge in their lungs. People with weakened immune systems such as HIV AIDS, alcohol and drug users, smokers, children and the elderly are most susceptible. Persons with a cough should take precautions when in contact with persons in public places. Cover your mouth when sneezing and coughing. Visit your doctor or health center. You must complete your treatment. TB can be cured even with HIV. Be responsible. Help stop the spread of TB and HIV. Protect yourself and others. Twenty-eight primary school principals receive leadership certificates from the UWI School of, Con of Education. Andrea Louis has more. The ceremony formed a part of the National Leadership Forum, which wrapped up on Thursday. The two-day seminar was held under the theme, Education in the 21st Century, Leadership Making a Difference. Minister for Education Peter Serja says stronger leaders within the schools will lead to better student performance. We have always drawn a clear correlation between strong leaders and the performance and the achievement levels of our children. And this activity is testimony of this conviction. The OECS Education Support Program, funded by the Global Partnership for Education gave particular focus to this aspect of school development, which 
is in line with our thrust at the Ministry of Education uh, in recent years. Several programs have been formulated to improve leadership within the education structure, including the graduation of over 25 school leaders from a master's program in education leadership and management in 2017. It complemented our dedicated focus on both in-service training and assistance provided to teachers and principals to further their studies over the years. This concentration within the Ministry of Education is part of a larger national policy direction that seeks to improve the competence of our school leaders and the teachers to ensure that our children are receiving the best opportunities to succeed. Also at Thursday's ceremony was the awarding of 18 teachers with Caribbean Vocational Qualification Level 4 Assessment Certificates. We have placed renewed focus on grounding our children in skills. Skill development has been at the forefront of our planning in recent years with the introduction of the Caribbean Vocational Qualification CVQs at the secondary level. I must admit that Hurricane Maria impeded our progress. However, our commitment to the advancement of these programs and the introduction of others is not dampened. In keeping with skills development among youth, government has, over the past few years, invested over $11 million in technical, vocational, education and training TVET in the areas of mechanics, plumbing, cosmetology, among others. And President of the National Youth Council, Paul Barron, has taken a decision not to enter the fray with former NYC member Jeff Bellot. Bellat has appealed to the executive of the National Youth Council calling for Barron's resignation for endorsing the Salibia candidate for the 2020 general election. Bellat told DBS News the NYC's code of conduct does not support Barron's actions and he ought to resign if he wishes to enter politics. Barron told Channel 5 News he made his statement in his capacity as chairman of the Salibia Labour Party Constituency Association and not as NYC president. He says he has decided not to entangle himself in a war of words with the former NYC member. Some tips to reduce mosquito presence in and around your home. Keep water storage containers properly covered. Remove containers that can collect water from your surroundings. Keep garbage bins tightly covered. Pick up your litter and remove all tires from your yard. Keep gutters free of leaves and twigs to prevent stagnant water. Prevent Zika, Dengue and Chikungunya. Fight the bite! This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. This message is supported by Flow. To end the news, a look again at the headline. Senior Council Anthony Astafan defends Prime Minister's, the Prime Minister's public commitment to have over 150 junior clerks appointed. 28 primary school principals with UWI leadership certificates expected to translate into better grades for students. And supermarkets being recognized for their role in facilitating Dominica's drive to go green. Feel free to contact us at news at mapping2k4.com. You may access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the production team, I am Julian Morris. Thank you for watching. Join us tomorrow.